Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Salatu wa salamu. Salamu ala Rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd. So this is uh, lesson number 11 from the explanation of Al-Ha'iyya. Al-Ibn Abi Dawood wa rahimahullah. Inshallah today we'll be continuing on from lines number 9 and 19. So inshallah we'll probably get through uh, 19 and 20 because it's on one topic. Inshallah. So we'll see. قال ناظم رحمه الله تعالى وقول خير قول في الصحابة كلهم ولا تكو طعان تعيب وتجره فقد نطق الوحي المبين بفضلهم وفي الفتح آية للصحابة تمدحه So he said وقول خير قول في الصحابة كلهم So speak the best word of all of the Sahaba Anybody that's considered a Sahabi Alright And before we get into this I mean obviously we need to understand what exactly is the understanding of what a sahabi is i mean what is a sahabi uh, what is a companion and what is the ta'rif and the understanding of what a companion is so inshallah for this we'll, we'll see what a suyuti rahimahullah said in his alfiya the amr al-hadith he said ma'rifat sahaba and this is the chapter ma'rifat ma'rifat sahaba he said had the sahabi musliman laqa ar-rasul when bila riwayat anhu wa tul so he said that the the head the sahabi, which is basically like the precise definition, and uh, you know the basically uh, the exact characteristics and what a sahabi is. He said the head the sahabi Musliman laqa rasul. So he had to be Muslim when he met the, the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So if he met the messenger at a time that he was not Muslim, and then he became Muslim later on after the death of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He would not have the title of a Sahabi. He had to, he had to met the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam mu'minan bihi, and he had to be a believer with the Messenger when he met him. And then that's uh, you know that's one condition. He said wa'in bilaa rawaiyatan anhu wa tul. He said even if he has no narrations, and uh, and he didn't stay for for a long period of time. All right, and he didn't stay for a long period of time. So, and he's going to go into the difference of opinion about uh, what the other people say the Sahabi is. So, uh, but here he's saying, so, had the Sahabi, Musliman, laqa rasul. So he's a Muslim, and when he met the messenger, even if he has no narration and he didn't spend a long, long period of time with the Prophet Sallallahu he said, كذلك ألا تبعوا مع الصحابتي وقيل مع طول ومع روايتي. So he said, كذلك ألا تبعوا مع الصحابتي. Al Atba'u here is referring to the Tabi'een. And he said the same conditions apply to the Tabi'een for for them being from the Tabi'een about uh, as far as them meeting the Sahaba. That they had to meet the Sahabi, they had to sit with the Sahabi, they had to be Mu'minan, and uh, you know, they had to be a Muslim the time that they, they sat with the Sahabi. So they have the same conditions for the Atba', the Tabi'een. He said, Waqila ma'atulin wa ma'ariwayati, waqila. And generally, not generally, but the ulama, when they say qila, is is showing that these are the weaker, the weaker things, the the al aqwal al marjuha. You know, that these are the the statements that people have said, but they're not the strongest statements. And in fact, these are the statements when the when the sheikh himself says that he doesn't accept them. So whenever you see qila, this this shows that uh, these these statements are weak. He said waqila ma'atul wa ma'ariwayati. So he said, and some of them say. That they had to stay with the Prophet Sallallahu for a long period of time. And they had to narrate from him. And he said also, he said, uh, and it's also said that it has to be a long period of time. And they had to have stayed with the Prophet Sallallahu long enough to have fought with him, you know, in a, in a battle. So he said, or they had to stay for at least a year, a year with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, and then some of them even say that all he had to do was be alive at that time, and they'd be alive at the time. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, even if he didn't meet the Messenger, sallallahu he said, So he said, and another condition is that they have to die on Islam. And then he said, And he said, even if so tahallala and even if uh, after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, some of them uh, might have uh, been from the ashabu ridda, the people that left the deen, you know, due to the fitna that occurred after the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but they returned to Islam and they died on Islam. 
So even if they were among those people, but they died on Islam, then they still they still keep the title of uh, Sahabi. And of course, uh, this uh, for uh, for this we we go to like uh, Nusrat Nadr, which is the uh, explanation of uh, explanation of Al Hafiz Al Hajr for his book in uh, Mustalah Hadith, which is a uh, Nukhba. All right, uh, Nukhba Al Fikr Al uh, Fikr. Uh, you know, this is a, his famous uh, metan in Mustalah Hadith, and he he brings uh, the different uh, he brings the uh, uh, one of the people from amongst the Sahaba that did that this happen to. So. So when half of them, the Hajar was talking about the, the conditions of a Sahabi, and he said, وَقَوْلِي وَمَاتَ عَلَى الْإِسْلَامِ And he's, he mentions this, this specific point that he has to die on Islam. He said, فَصْنٌ ثَالِثٌ يُخْرِجُ مَنَ الرَّتَدَّ بَعْدَ أَنْ لَقِيَهُ مُؤْمِنًا بِهِ وَمَاتَ عَلَى رَدَّتِ وَمَاتَ عَلَى رَدَّتِ كَعُبَيْدِ اللَّهِ بِنِ جَحْشِ وَبِنِ الْخَطَلِ وقولي ولو تخللت تخللت رد تخلت ردة أي بين لقيه له مؤمنا به وبين موته على الإسلام فإن الاسم صحبة باق له سواء أرد أر يعني أرجع إلى الإسلام في حياته صلى الله عليه وسلم أو بعده وسواء ألقيه ثانيا أم لا. so here he said وقولي ومات على الإسلام so he died on Islam he said فصل طالب يخرج به من رتد بعد أن لقيه مؤمنا به ومات على ردة so this he said that this excludes the people that met the Prophet Sallallahu and they were believers uh, in the Prophet Sallallahu and then they died on Kufr. They died on other than Islam. And he said, And he gave the example of uh, Ubaidullah ibn Jash or ibn Khattal. And of course, the story of ibn Khattal is known. He was the one that he was ordered to, to be killed on the, on the, Yom, uh, on the, on the day of the uh, Fath al Mecca. And Ubaidullah ibn Jash, he was one of the Muhajirin ila, ila, ila Habasha. So he was one of the people that went to the land of, uh, of Habasha as a as a as an immigrant, you know, in the in the migration to Habasha, and he became a Christian, and that's how he died. So for these two, uh, they they no, they, they even though they then one time they had the name of Sahabi, and they had the Sahaba, but because they died on other than Islam, then they would not have the term Sahabi. And they say, "Wakoli walo tahalalat rida." So even if some, uh, you know, if the uh, they happen to be, you know, mixed up in the people that that, that left Islam, you know, uh, or he, he left Islam for whatever reason, and he said, uh, mm-hmm. So between his meeting of the Prophet وسلم, as a believer, and between his dying on Islam, something happened where he left Islam, you know, but he came back to Islam. And he said, for in the Isma Suhba, so he still has for Isma Isma Suhba, which is the name that, of companionship, like he still has the companionship. And so uh, he said that it's, it's, it remains for him, even as long as he died on Islam. So he said, regardless of uh, if he returned to Islam in the, in the life of the Messenger, وسلم, or after the life of the Messenger. وسلم, so it doesn't matter which one he he has the he has the sahba. and he said was sawa on alaqiyahu thaniyan am la and 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 the same whether or not he met him again, you know he saw him again after after he returned to Islam or not. And then he gives the example. He said wa yudulu ala rujhan al awal qasat al ashath ibn qais. Fainu kana mimman aratada wutiya bihi ila Abi Bakr al Siddiq asiran faada ila al Islam faqabila minhu dalik wa zawajhu uqtahu. ولم يتخلف أحد من عن ذكره في الصحابة ولا أن تخرج أحاديثه في المسانير وغيرها. So then after that he said we do على رجحان الأول and he said to, to show you the you know the the correctness of the of the first statement that he you know even if he left Islam and he returned to it he said قصة الأشعث بن قيس and الأشعث بن قيس رضي الله عنه from the, from amongst the Sahaba فإنه كان ممن أرتد so he was amongst the people that, that left Islam after the time of the Prophet وسلم, after the death of the Prophet وسلم, and the days of Abu uh, Abi Bakr uh, He said, وَأُوْتِيَ بِهِ إِلَىٰ أَبِي بَكْرِ الصديق. So they brought him a seerun. They brought him as a captive to Abu Bakr as siddiq you know, when they were fighting. فَعَادَ إِلَىٰ الْإِسْلَامِ And he returned to Islam at that time. فَقَبِلَ مِنْهُ ذَلِكَ And, they, and, he, and uh, Abu Bakr accepted that from him. And, and married him to his sister. 
And nobody from amongst the people refrained from mentioning him as one of the Sahaba. Everybody mentioned him as being from amongst the Sahaba, even though that happened. And nobody uh, refrained from uh, narrating his hadith. Uh, you know, for and, and the books of hadith and the and the, the masanid and the musnad. I mean, this this we have to go over like a, a, I don't because I don't want to turn this whole lesson into a lesson on mustala hadith. So this is just something that we have to go through, go over, inshallah, and in and a lesson that deals specifically with mustala hadith. But uh, the the uh, masanid, of course, is from the from the musnad, and uh, you know, there's different books of hadith you have, you know. But that, like I said, that's something for a later date, inshallah. So he said, "Fil masanidi wa ghairiha." So uh, the masanid, but just to give you a, 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 a brief picture, the mas the musnad is no is is muratab ala ala sahabi. So instead of like having the abwab al faqiyah, so instead of having like the the fiqh chapters, uh, it's it's set up like for example Abu Huraira, and then you have all the ahadith of uh, Abu Huraira, and then you have Abu Bakr as Siddiq, and then you have all the ahadith of Abu Bakr as Siddiq. So in this case. You go to like the Musnad of Imam Ahmed, or you know, in the books of the uh, the Masanid, and you find what you find Ash'at ibn Qais. So that shows that the people of Hadith is still, you know, regardless of what happened to him at that time, the, the fact that he returned to Islam and he died on Islam, they still gave him, I mean, he was still considered from the Sahaba, and nobody took that away from him, nobody refrained from referring to him as that. So that's that's the understanding of what a Sahabi is. So when we say, Wakul khayra kolin for Sahabati kulihim. So speak good about all the Sahaba, and no matter you know, and of course, like in this case, even with a with, with an incident where like you know he fell into what he fell into, but he came back, he made toba, he returned to Islam. So you only speak good about him. You only speak good about him. So all, all the Sahaba, we only speak good about them. Wala taku ta'anan ta'ibu wa tajrahu, and don't be a, like a, you know, and don't be a, a person who insults and has filthy language towards the towards, towards the Sahaba. That only speaks about their faults and uh, and, and and the things that might have happened between them. What and then you speak, you know, speak harshly against them, you know. So, and of course, this is a refutation of the Sahaba, and, and, not, and not the Sahaba. Sorry, this is a refutation of the uh, Rafida and the Khawarij, because these are the two people, of course, that have the the sharpest tongues against the Sahaba. Now, of course, the Khawarij in the time of the Sahaba. Uh, you don't see that much uh, a lot today with the Khawarij of our times, but you do. I mean, uh, some some uh, some uh, some of the Khawarij because they're mixing with the Rafidah that they started to pick up a lot of filthy language against Muawiyah radiallahu anhu and things like that. So you do kind of see it, but you don't see it at the level that you know in the past where the where the Khawarij were making takfir of the Sahaba in the time of uh, Uthman radiallahu anhu and the time of Ali radiallahu anhu. So uh, more or less today, what you see mostly is uh, from the Rafidah, from the Rafidah, where, where they insult the Sahaba, they insult any of the Sahaba that are not from Ahl al-Bayt, that are not from Ahl al-Bayt. So Allah Musta'an, Allah Yal'anhum, Allah Yal'anhum. And then he said, وَفَقَدْ نَطَقَ الْوَحْيُ الْمُبِينُ بِفَضْلِهِمْ so the 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 revelation Allah subhanahu wa taala spoke about them through the revelation بفضلهم, uh, with their virtues. وَفِي الْفَتْحِ آيٌ لِلصَّحَابَةِ تَمْدَحُ And he said in the and the here al fath here is referring to Surah al fath He said uh, آيٌ which is the the plural form of ayah. All right, like ayah you have ayatun ayatun wa ayun ayun لِلصَّحَابَةِ تَمْدَحُ which uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala meant, uh, he's saying uh, there are different verses uh, different ayah in the Quran. And Surah Al-Fatih, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is praising the Sahaba. I mean, the the, the first ayat you see for Bayat the the Bayat uh, Bayat al Radwan, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "If you buy you under the shadow of the Sahaba, you have seen what they have in their hearts, and you have brought the sickness upon them, and you have brought them near them." So here, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, and this is at, at that time. Right, but right at the right before Fath al Makkah, he said, "Laqada radi Allahu an al Mu'minin." Allah subhanahu wa taala is pleased with the with the Mu'minin, and of course the Mu'min and the, the Mu'minun referred to in this ayah is what the Sahaba. If you buy yuna katah the shajari, shajarati. Sorry. So he said, and at that time they were about a thousand four hundred. All right, a thousand four hundred. All right, a thousand four hundred. Allah wa alam. Tah the shajarati fa alim ma fi kulubihim. And Allah subhanahu wa taala knows what's in their hearts. So if Allah subhanahu wa taala here says. 
you know, وَعَفَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in their hearts. And he said, uh, and, and at the beginning of the ayah said, لَقَدَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ So it's not for anybody to come later on from amongst the Rafidah and any of these different groups, لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِمْ To come and speak badly about the Sahaba after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly stated, فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ Alright, فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in their hearts. These, 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 uh, these mulhideen min al-rafidah, they don't know what was in the heart. They don't even know the Sahaba. They weren't even in, there in the time of the Sahaba. Nor were they there to, to do anything, you know, to, to bring any type of victory to Islam. In fact, they brought nothing but destruction to Islam throughout the whole history of Islam. That all the destruction that we see throughout Islam, that you see like uh, all the different uh, Islamic countries throughout the world, throughout the history, all you see is the, the, the Rafidah uh, behind the destruction of all of them. You find the Rafidah behind all of them. You know, you might find, a, you know, like, a, you know, in the Harub of you find Christians and stuff at the forefront, but you find the Rafidah right behind them. Mutahalifin bihim. Ani ma'ahum. Allah musta'an. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in their hearts. فَأَنزَلَ سَكِينَةَ عَلَيْهِمْ So if he if he said, فَأَنزَلَ سَكِينَةَ So uh, what did he know that was in, his, in their hearts? Was, was khair, was ikhlas, was tawheed. Was, you know, love for the sunnah, love for the deen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the sakina. Would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, فَأَنزَلَ sakina If he saw something different in their hearts. فَأَنزَلَ sakina, Which is uh, tranquility and, and peace. عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَثَابَهُمْ فَتْحًا قَرِيبًا And it gives them the, you know, the the reward of a, of a you know, of a, you know, the, the, uh, the opening of Mecca. The Fath of Mecca, Qareeb. You know, that it's going to happen Qareeb. So this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So what, what do we care about what a Rafidi says? Or what a Khariji says about the Sahaba? No, we say what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And then right at the end of the, the surah, in the last ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Muhammadun Rasulullah, walladhina ma'ahu, ashidda'u ala al-kuffari ruhama'u baynahum, tarahum ruk'an sujjadan yabataghuna fadlan min Allahi wa radwana, si ma'ahum fi wujuhihim min athari sujood, Dalaka matarahum for Torah and and to the to the verse of the ayah. So he said, Muhammad or Rasulullah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. And Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Walladina ma'ahu. And this is for the Sahaba. A shidda u al kufari ruhama ubainahum. So they they share that character they share the characteristic of the Prophet and being what? It's very severe al al kufar and against the kufar. Ruhama ubainahum and they have mercy between them. Tarahum ruka'an, you see them prost- uh, uh, doing rukur, uh, bowing, sujjadan, prostrating, yabataghuna fadlan min Allahi wa radwana. And they're seeking out the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Allah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his pleasure, and, you know, wa radwana. See ma hum fi wujuhihim min athari sujood. And of course, this is not what a lot of the people, they take this ayah and they say that the sign of them is the sign of prostration in their faces. This is not for the dunya. This is for the akhirah that they come with light, like a light on their heads, like uh, you know, from the from the place of prostration. This is not the mark that you see on the people's head because the Khawarij had those those marks from prostrating a lot. So that doesn't, you know, that that is not the reference here. The reference here is on the day of judgment when they come and they have a, the light from the time from the play from where they were prostrating. You know, so it's going to be like a white mark because of the light. Allahu alam. And the people can go back and read the tafsir of that ayah. And in so in so many different narrations. I mean, you got like the hadith of Abi Sa'id. They don't know what she said. Qala kan kan abayna Khalid ibn Walid wa bayna Abdul Rahman ibn Awf. Shay'un fasabbahu Khalid. Faqala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La tasubbu ahada min ashabi. Fa'inna ahadakum lo anfaqa mifla uhudin dhahaban. Ma adharaka mudda ahadihim wala nasifahu. And this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. Or Abu Abu Sa'id al Khudri he reported that you know that there was a problem between Khalid ibn Walid or between Abdul Rahman ibn Auf. And Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, as we learned in the last lesson, is from the Mubashirin of Jannah. It's from the people that was given glad tidings of Jannah. So he said, Fasabahu Khalid, and then uh, Khalid insulted Abdul Rahman ibn Auf. And so the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Let the subu min ashabi. Don't insult anybody from amongst my companions. And uh, you know. Allah Musta'an. Tell that to the Rafidah. فَإِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ لَوْ أَنْفَقَ مَفْلَ أُهَدٍ ذَهَبٍ مَا أَذْرَكَ مُدَّ أَحَدِهِمْ 
He said, if, uh, if one if one person from amongst you, and this is in the time of the Sahaba, he said, if one person from amongst you were to spend the mountain of Uhud, you know, the, the size of the mountain of Uhud and the weight and its weight in, in gold, you would not even, you wouldn't even, it would not even equal, it would not equate to a mud, you know, two two hands put together of, of the same amount. Uh, that amount of gold that they gave, you spending a whole mountain would not equate to that. Well, I know see for who, and not even half of it. It wouldn't even equate to half of a mud. And then this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. And of course, we know the hadith in Imran ibn Hussein. In which he said, "Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, 'Inna khayrakum karani, thumma ladina yilunhum, thumma ladina yilunhum, thumma yakunu baghdhum qawmun yishhadun, wa la yustashhadun, wa yakhunun, wa la yutamanun, wa yindurun, wa la yufun, wa yitharu fihi musliman." And this hadith is also in Bukhari and Muslim, in which the, uh, it was reported in Imran ibn Hussein, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Inna khayrakum karani, the best of all generations, everybody." Is the generation that the Prophet ﷺ was sent in. So the Sahaba, that's the best of all generations. And then those that come after him. Them. And then those that come after them. And then after that, after that third generation, then then he said, then there's going to be a people after them. And these are people that are going to bear witness. Well, I used to shadun, but nobody seeks their, their witness. That means that, I mean, because nobody would, because they don't fulfill the conditions of witnessing. You know, the like Yishadun, well I used to Because the people like there's a you know the conditions of you know the, the witness. And these people they don't fulfill those conditions. And one of the major conditions is that the person has to be Adiv. He has to be a person of Istikama. And a person who's not from Istikama, the person who's from Bid'ah, he's a person of uh Ma'asiyah. These people they don't they're they're the you know, them being a witness is not accepted. And they act treacherously, treacherously, and they, you know, you can't trust them with anything. And then they, they, they give another, if Allah gives me this, I'll do this, but they never, ever, ever fulfill their, their, their promise, their oath. That the fatness and opulence will, will become apparent on them because they're just like, they get... They get into the cozy lifestyle, you know, the money and the eating and all this type of stuff. So they start to become fat, you know, like, the, you know, they become fatter. And you start to see that and it becomes apparent on their body. So Allah must die. Allah protect us. So there's no doubt about, like, as far as the father of the Sahaba, you know, and, uh, you know, and uh, anybody that's considered a Sahabi, may Allah, uh, you know, we always make dua for them. May Allah be pleased with them. We always speak, speak good about them. And we refrain, we, we refrain. I'm speaking about anything that might have happened between uh, between them, especially if there is no benefit for speaking about those things. So the only problem is nowadays, of course, you have the Khawarij, they try to use a lot of the issues that happen between the Sahaba, and they try to use this as delil or evidence to, to support their, their going and making khuruj. So, so it's, it's upon the ulama to refute them and explain to the people the correct history of what happened. But otherwise... And we refrain from speaking about these things. We refrain, we, we refrain from speaking about anything that happened amongst the Sahaba, and we only speak good about them. And that's that's the way of the Salaf, and that's the way that we follow. And we don't follow the way of the Rafidah, we don't follow the way of the Khawarij, and we don't follow the way of any of these misguided groups. Allahumma s'ta'an. Wa ilahuna subhanakallamu wa bihamdika shadu wa la ilahi la anta astaghfiru wa tubu ilayk.